Hi friends, welcome to my video going over the damage formula in Octopath Travelers of the Continent. For those that don't want to watch the entire video, this is the entire damage formula written down here. We'll be going over the specifics of how different multipliers work and how to apply these findings to your gaming. The JP players have figured out most of these damage formulas and MeowDB has translated them on his website. I've been able to verify most of these numbers with my testing, and Rokuro has been able to validate the others using his accessories. The specials category isn't available in global yet, so I would take this information with a grain of salt. For these next examples, we'll use elemental damage to make things easy, but it also applies to physical damage. The first multiplier is our modified base stat, which is the greater of base elemental attack, or 75% base physical attack plus 25% base elemental attack. Base stats are defined as a sum of character stats plus awakening bonus stats plus pet bonus stats that are in JP. I will refer to this as the base stat multiplier. The next multiplier is calculated as the total elemental attack, including equipment, minus the elemental defense of our enemy. I will refer to this as the total stat multiplier. To demonstrate how these multipliers work in game, I'm going to calculate the effective power of awakenings and levels. In our first calculation, we're going to calculate the estimated power increase of getting awakening one on a character. We're going to use Cyrus as an example. We can see here at level 100, Cyrus has 454 base attack, and using an Atlas Tome, he has 949 elemental attack. Awakening 1 increases this to 504 base attack and 999 elemental attack. If we plug these numbers into the formula with an enemy elemental defense of 120, we find that Awakening 1 gives approximately a 17.7% damage boost. If you ran the same numbers for Therian using an adamantine weapon, you get a 21.7% damage increase. If we did the same for Eliza with an Atlas weapon, we get a 26.7% elemental damage increase. The takeaway being that for DPS units with similar damage outputs, the lower their base stats, the greater the effective power of getting Awakening 1. We can also use these multipliers to calculate the effective power of an A4 stat stick. We're going to use Cyrus again as our example. We're going to be comparing his A4 accessory versus an Ice, Fire, or Lightning 2 Ruin accessory. You can see through this math that there is a 6.8% increase in damage. The final calculation we're going to run is the marginal benefit of leveling your DPS units to level 100 versus the mid-90s. My Cyrus happens to be level 94 with 493 base elemental attack. If we compare this to a level 100 Cyrus using the Atlas weapons, we find that there is a 3.5% damage increase. In summary, Awakening 1 is 17.8% more damage than Awakening 0, Awakening 4 is 6.8% more than Awakening 1, and Level 100 is 3.5% more than Level 94. The next multiplier is the Skill Potency, which is probably quite self-explanatory. Importantly though, Potency scales linearly, so a 200 Potency skill is 2 times more damage than a 100 Potency skill. The next multiplier is the Grade Multiplier, which is the most nebulous. It seems that even the JP players have given up trying to figure this one out. From my testing, it seems that enemies have a hidden grade stat. The difference between your weapon stat and their grade stat will determine the final multiplier. I say that because as I fought progressively newer level 100 NPCs, they seem to have increased damage reduction that was more than their increase in defense stats alone. From my testing, it also seems like the scaling isn't linear, meaning that every 0.1 grade increase doesn't increase the damage by the same amount. The last simple multiplier is the influence multiplier, which just multiplies your damage by a certain amount. Now we move on to our buff multipliers. It's probably the least intuitive of all the multipliers, since some effects stack additively, whereas others stack multiplicatively. Before going any further, I would recommend watching Shizukat's video on this. In short, every individual buff category can stack additively up to 30%. Within our first bracket, we have the stat buff multipliers. This includes the categories of 30% passive and active physical elemental attack up, as well as 30% passive and active physical or elemental defense down. Within this category, all the buffs stack additively up to 120%, meaning that we get diminishing returns. The first 20% is going to give a 20% damage boost, and the last 20% will only give a 10% damage boost. Surprisingly, neither physical or elemental attack up or physical or elemental defense down have anything to do with the unit stats. They only have an effect on this stat multiplier itself. Furthermore, intuitively, you would think that 30% physical defense down should equal 42.9% damage up. However, instead, it simply adds 30% to the stat buff multiplier. The next category of multipliers are the damage and resist down multipliers. Intuitively, you would think that they would stack additively However, unlike the stat multiplier, they're broken into two different groups. Additionally, all the percentage damage up multipliers fall within the same 30% cap. 
So 20% damage up from crits and 20% damage during breaks only ends up being plus 30% damage up. The big takeaway from this is that damage and resist buffs stack multiplicatively with stat buff multipliers, meaning that to optimize damage, you want to have a balance of stat buffs and damage and resist down buffs. An example of this principle would be choosing accessories to maximize Therian's damage output in the Gertrude Cup. I had the choice of choosing between the 15% Dagger Up Ritu accessory and the 15% A4 Viola Dagger accessory, which doesn't have any other offensive stats, and Coda's Glove. At first, you would think the combination of any of the 15% Dagger accessories with Coda's Glove is a clear winner, but let's see what happens when we calculate out the damage multipliers. In my Gertrude setup, we're already stacking 30% active physical attack up from Lynette and Glossom, 10% passive physical attack up from Lynette's passive, and 30% physical defense down from Viola's two attacks. This means we start with many buffs within the stat buff category, and Coda's will stack additively with them. Adding a second 15% dagger damage accessory will be in a separate buff category, which is why it ends up doing more damage overall. This also frees up Coda's to be used for another unit. Another takeaway from this is that the A4 that give passive resist down, such as Xanta or Mulu, are insane since they buff by 30% in a separate category, which means that you can increase team-wide damage by up to 23% even if active resistance down is maxed. The last buff category includes the specials, which we will have access to at the half anniversary. At this time, it seems that the JP Firepower Calculator and the MeowDB translation are conflicting on this piece of information. The JP website suggests that they are additive, whereas MeowDB's source suggests that they are multiplicative. Once we get specials in global, hopefully we can test this out to figure out which one of these is correct. Finally, it seems that defensive buffs work similarly. This means that your stat buff mitigation stacks additively. You can actually get 105% mitigation with negative 30% active physical attack down with Viola and Kurtz, negative 15 passive physical attack down with Helga, plus 30% active physical defense up with Devin and a Dancer, and plus 30% passive physical defense up with Devin and Miles. The result of this is that Devin will take 1 damage for all physical attacks. Thanks for sticking around for this very long and math-filled video. I hope you learned something that can help you in your Octopath journey. 